Hey, Aostrex here. Today I want to address the recent situation uh, surrounding Crystal and the drama that he had with the Kangzhou spark that led to his eventual uh, suspension from the team. Before I go into that, I quickly want to plug my Discord channel and my private coaching services for that you can find the links in the description. Now I'm not going to spend too much time summarizing the situation because I feel like most of you should have a good grasp on what happened. The you know, short version of it is that initially the Hangzhou Spark made a tweet talking about how they're going to fine um, and, and warn uh, Crystal for not attending scrims regularly. Crystal countered that statement by saying that he was visiting a sick mother, um, as, you know, eventually turned out that, that wasn't true. Then Hangzhou Spark made another tweet after losing a match where they just came up with a bunch of excuses and the tweet was very pity, to be honest. Um, I'm probably going to put up the tweet right there. It was a super petty tweet, they shouldn't have done it, it didn't really do anything for them. And um, what ended up happening is that the public perception of the organization became a little bit negative, which eventually forced the organization to um, indefinitely suspend Crystal and also reveal a, a lot of information. And uh, there was actually a Reddit comment that I'm also going to put up here about how this is similar to the Twilight Zone and I thought that was a great comment, how there's going to be a plot twist. This wasn't really a plot twist. Um, them actually sharing the information was very surprising. I did not expect that. But the information in of itself, the fact that Crystal wasn't being completely truthful, I don't think that is very surprising at all. Now, the real topic of this video that I want to go into is should you, as a viewer, should you, as a member of this community, give the benefit of doubt to the organizations or should you give the benefit of the doubt to the players in situations like this where the organization finds a player or otherwise punishes them. Now the answer to that question uh, in my opinion very clear is that you should in uh, the majority of situations give the benefit of the doubt to the organization. The only situation where I wouldn't give the benefit of the doubt to the, the organization is if they had previous uh, experiences. Uh, one good example is Denial Esports, where multiple players spoke out against the organization and they already had a history of you know, some shady stuff. In those cases, you don't have to trust these organizations, but by default, if an organization hasn't really done anything wrong in the past, and if, and if it's just a he said, she said between the player and organization, you should give the organization the benefit of the doubt. You should not blindly trust players. Now, the first reason that you shouldn't blindly trust players is age. Players are teenagers, they're very young. I'm not sure how old Crystal is, um, but again, very, very young players all over the league, even though the minimum age is 18. And young players are immature. They don't know how to act professionally yet. Um, again, there are some players that are very mature that don't get caught into this drama, but the default assumption in situations like this should be that the player is acting prematurely, that he is acting very emotional, and that he's doing things that are unprofessional and that he shouldn't be doing. On the other hand, organizations are led by adults, by people with life experience, and the organizations have a lot of people in them. So it is better to assume that the player is doing something wrong rather than the organization when the organization de decides to find one of the players. Uh, next of all, checks and balances. Whenever an organization decides to punish a player or find them, that is not a decision made by one player, uh, by, by one staff member. The way that organizations work is that the head coach can't just go and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fine you, I'm gonna cut your contract, I'm gonna kick you from the team. The way that works is that if the head coach isn't happy with how a player is performing with their behavior, they're not going to kick them, right? The I'd say the only real power that they can do independently, and even that is questionable in some cases, is bench a player. But for everything else, and even for benching in some situations, they usually need to go to upper management and uh, report. So say that this player has been disruptive in scrims, and that you would like to see that player kicked, or benched, or you know punished in some way, some sort of discipline or action. You can't actually do it on your own. And throughout the organization, if something like this happens and a, an actual disciplinary action is being taken, that was being considered by multiple people. It's not just one person saying, okay, we're going to find the player. It's multiple people discussing, multiple people sharing their thoughts, and then multiple people making a decision. Also, um, while some players are very immature, they're not stupid. Players know that organizations do not want to share information that is private with the public. So in this case, in the end, organi uh, the organization shared information about how Crystal, um, it was essentially a bunch of DMs about how Crystal was um, lying and how he was missing scrims. They showed his attendance and everything. Again, you can find that up very easily. And that sharing that information was a very interesting move 
because organizations normally don't do this because they don't have to do this. Ideally, what Hangzhou Spark should have done is they just said, hey, we're finding this player, don't even bother going into detail and leave it at that. Nobody really you know, would have wondered too much. But by giving all of the information, people started taking it offensive and this whole he said, she said really started to happen. But going to the extent of actually sharing all of their private information really means that Crystal has pushed the organization um, very, very, very far. On the other hand, a player always wants to save his reputation because in the end his career is on the line, right? It's in the player's best interest to preserve his own reputation because that way his chances of getting picked up by another team after his current team decides to let him go are much, 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 much higher. A, high, a player is not only valuable based on the skill that he has, but also on his marketability and on the general reputation of said player. Now the next thing to go over is that teams don't really have anything to gain out of screwing over their players and destroying their reputation. The Hangzhou Spark, if they didn't like what Crystal was doing, they were unhappy with his tenants or other organizations might not be happy with the performance of their players, in that case they do not want to go out of their way and just kick the player. They always want to try to trade a player or they want to sell a player. Because when you get a player, you invest time into them, you invest resources into them, you invest money into them. So you don't just want to let them go and get, uh, let all of that go to waste. You either want to get a favorable trade and, uh, or you want to get money. But people are not going to pay you and they're not going to trade with you if they feel like that player is problematic. So if they go out and they end up, fa um, uh, they end up finding their player, which is something that they're going to have to announce publicly, then they are devaluing their own player. They're devaluing their own product essentially, right? So what ends up happening is that if an organization goes to this extent where they have to punish a player, or they have to find a player, where they have to suspend a player, that action is always disciplinary. They don't care about the money. The reason they find is not because they, they, they want money out of the situation. The reason that they find the player is because they hope that this is a wake-up call for the player and then they fix their behavior because again they invest a lot of time and money and resources into that player. They don't want to see that player go down the drain. They want to see if he can fix himself so that they can, uh, they can continue working with him. So overall, um, and Monte Cristo also said this, this was kind of in the middle during the situation when all of the insider information wasn't leaked. He actually mentioned on Reddit that he was going to side with the org over the players and people called him a corporate chill. And I think that's a very um, childish way to look at it, right? For all the reasons that I've just mentioned, if an organization goes out of their way to fine a player or otherwise publicly reduce the value of their player um, by, by punishing them or talking about how the player is doing something wrong, that always has a reason. They're not doing that for fun, they know the consequences of it, and they would like to avoid that as much as possible. The tweet that the Hangzhou Spart made about how they were losing matches was incredibly petty, that is not something that they should have done, and I do not agree with that tweet whatsoever. I think it was a horrible idea. However, finding Crystal was completely understandable, and while releasing all of this information about Crystal was a very, very bold move, I feel like the community response has essentially forced the organization to you know release all of this dirty laundry right they didn't want to do it it really was a last uh, last measure but they were feeling forced their own personal reputation was at stake and eventually the interest of the player outweigh uh, no longer outweighed the interest of the organization so they reached a point where they said okay we usually would want to um, maintain the value of the player, we want to protect the value of the player. But in this situation, our own reputation is more valuable to us than the value of this player. We would rather throw this player under the bus, or well, I mean, they didn't really throw him under the bus, he was jumping under the bus and they weren't stopping him, right? Instead of protecting their player, they were protecting themselves. And I think that's a totally reasonable response. And if you look at it, through this way, if you really understand what an organization has to gain and what an organization more importantly has to lose out of making a statement like this, it becomes much, much easier to understand why they would act this way and it becomes much easier to understand why I and a lot of other people within the scene were giving the benefit of the doubt to the Hangzhou Spark instead of Crystal. Now, those are my thoughts on the situation. I'm gonna quickly just plug some extra stuff. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, you can subscribe to the channel, and again, make sure to join my Discord and check out the private coaching. Um, I know this entire situation around Crystal has been kind of, you know, messy, really. And I don't think any, anyone wanted the situation to end this way. But I felt it was very important to share this perspective to hopefully show some people that blindly trusting players 
and assuming that organizations and corporations are always evil and always act maliciously is a fantasy, really, and that reality looks very, very differently. My name is Aerostax and I'd like to thank you for allowing.